infinity. 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 This is our episode on Infinity. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 172 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and I am in fact registered for the pie eating contest. Oh, nice. Are you going to win? If it's like, what kind of pie? I don't know. Pumpkin pie. So not, so this is like a, we're talking about a dessert pie, not like a savory pie. No. Okay, we're not, not doing, this is pie. no shepherd's pie, no meat pie. This is like. Not also not blueberry. Blueberry is the worst just, of pies. <laughs> blueberry is the worst. That's 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 the soapbox you're gonna stand on this. this I'll week. do cherry pie, apple pie. Sure. No blueberry. Mince meat pie. Not meat. It's fruit. We've talked about that on the oh, show yeah, before. We have. We have. On, the, on the great El Drain Bake Off. Is that what we did the- <laughs> from two and a half years ago or whatever it was? <laughs> and I'm your other host, Mike. And I was surprised to see Wizards print on a card a new way to scoop a game. If you simply get up from your seat and quit, that's a concession stand getting hot dogs i mean that's that's what Scoop it is. to go get a hot dog sounds <laughs> sounds solid depending on where you are in the game <laughs> please listen carefully and this is the podcast about commander our favorite magic the gathering format and on the show this week we are covering unfinity there's a lot to cover there's a lot of new mechanics we've got stickers we've got dice rolling we've got carnival attractions that hopefully we're going to visit every single turn um we even have some new partners and things some stuff eternal legal some stuff with a bunch of acorns on it and we're going to talk about that today yes and we have heard your feedback and it's true um set review episodes from any show, yeah. our show, mm-hmm. other shows, they are they get tiring. And right now, product fatigue is pretty great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 very massive right now. Right? Yeah, We're it's doing large. a review episode as great Brothers as War in there are so many out. Brothers War previews are going to be starting soon. We just learned about, um, oh my gosh, Universes Beyond. Uh, Transformers. Transformers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dominaria United came out three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Warhammer 40k is still not out and we just did that episode that's true you know so there there's a lot happening so what we decided to do is we're you know we're packing it all in with one favorite card each yep favorite wacky acorn commanders Mm -hmm. favorite eternal commanders Mm -hmm. couple new mechanics um and even some combos that you will be able to eventually find on commanderspellbook.com so we're doing it all in one episode so we like have a lot we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. today um but before we do get started We have a couple of things that are coming out. We already mentioned the Brothers War. The 30th anniversary stream kickoff is starting on October 4th. There's going to be some story information coming out late later in October, later this month. Um, But we've learned a little bit about that set. Um, We have seen some commander decks. Those commander decks are going to have a Mishra and an Urza card. These commander decks coming out with this set are also all going to be in old retro frame. I did talk to Mike Mm -hmm. about this. I'm a little bummed. The retro frame is, I think, my least favorite frame of all time, but some people super duper love it. Um, But every single card, it said the uh, lands are in the retro frame, the artifacts are in the retro frame, new cards are in the retro frame, reprints are in the retro frame. So Mm -hmm. you're getting full retro frame decks here. We got to see a new Urza card with the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Meld is back. Yeah. Did not have that on my bingo card for this year at all, but it becomes uh, a Planeswalker with five abilities and a static ability which i believe is the most abilities we've had on a commander ever um because it's got a plus two a plus one a zero a minus one and a minus Mm ten on top mm -hmm. of having during each of your turns you can activate um an additional loyalty ability of urza so you get two of them no matter what Mm -hmm. so that's cool um there are some promos that you're going to be able to get this year with this set and then also we are going back in time for some cards they are traveling back in time and wanted to uh you know, some cards and some artifacts to go with them. So they're doing a series of retro artifacts throughout Magic's history, starting way back at the beginning. So they showed us a Lodestone Golem, a Worm Coil Engine, Jalem Tome, Ivory Tower, but they are also doing a set of retro framed artifacts that have like a schematic art Mm -hmm. um, that someone would use to build them. And they said that this is the first time in a Magic Booster product that they're introducing a serialized version of cards that will list how many are in existence. They said, for example, they're printing 500 of each serialized retro schematics, uh, which feature what they're calling a double rainbow foiling 
but those are only in Brothers War Collector's Boosters. So mm -hmm. each one will be numbered with their number out of 500. So for collectors, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's really To know cool. I own number 32 mm -hmm. of 500 or more. It'd be cool to have number one of 500 or 500 of 500. So you're not, you're not one of the millions of people interested in getting number 69 of 500. No, but it'd be kind of cool. It'd okay, that'd be very funny. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be very funny. So that is what's coming uh, later this month and later this year. Um, with Brothers War. Yes, we also got an announcement about some starter commander decks that are going to be available on December 2nd. I think it's a great idea. This is really good. I mean, we've already, we've already had starter decks for like Pioneer and stuff. I mean, the Brawl decks were... Well, were those those are probably the closest thing to starter decks for commander that yes, we've had. Yes, yes. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of times when, when new commander product comes out and if you have any people that you want to teach uh, command or teach magic with, commander is one of the most difficult... Uh, formats you could possibly do the to hardest teach in my opinion <laughs> command or to teach someone so you need to know these 600 generic cards that are played all the time and then also now memorize the cards you're going to see one time mm -hmm. every you know 50 games that's right that's yeah, right you got to do it and then once you do that you can start your own podcast but <laughs> Uh, the, these products are hopefully uh, something that are going to be better for someone who's who's more brand new to the game of Magic the Gathering. These are five 100 card decks, each packed with powerful and practical cards and are built ready to play right out of the box in our commander format. These are all two color combinations. And first off, we have the deck called First Flight, which is headed by Esperia, Supreme Judge. We have Grave Danger, headed by Giza and Garolf. Uh, we have Chaos Incarnate. Uh, represented by Cardu, Cardur, Doom Scourge, Draconic Destruction, represented by Atarka, World Render, and Token Triumph, represented by Amara, Soul of the Accord. So I really like that they're pulling, um, you know, legendary creatures from different parts of the world. I know some of them share a world over over in Ravnica land with uh, Asperia and Amara, but uh, really cool to see the two color combos from different planes of existence in the magic universe. All new together. artworks and oh, they're yeah. great. Really, All new really artworks pretty. on these, they look like they may be etched foils just based on the type of coloring we're seeing mm -hmm. at least saturation here on on the link and we will by the way have the link to this and to the brothers war in our show notes um but they said these are going to be ready just in time for the holiday season yeah but this is an atarka world render that's a different art that is not going to be in one of those target or walmart buy a box things with the five i don't, I don't want it then i want those five symbols you want the five foil promos. symbols on your on your promo these are great i i like seeing um intro decks because we had some folks um that worked at lgs's that were building their own kind of like custom this is an intro deck and i'm building it with like rada red sure, green sure um, and they would just pull generic red green cards maybe some creatures some trample spells some pump spells and then you could buy that at that lgs mm -hmm. um and they would do it for like it'd be it'd be around 50 dollars. so you could just buy it and uh, we had an lgs that was making those for a while yeah but it's a lot of work to pull 100 cards from for, you know, while you're actually pulling cards from people playing Commander and oh, yeah. working at a cash register and, mm -hmm. you know, doing your actual job. So um, these are great. Looking forward to seeing those. Yeah. Um, we're going to get we're going to get more information about them later in the year. There is there does seem to be very little information on what's going to be going on in the 99. Maybe we'll see some more new artwork, some good reprints, maybe even a brand new card here or there. I doubt it. Practical it cards. Be. It did say practical. Did say so practical. that means we we may see things like some some decent maybe talisman reprints yeah, or something. You some know, good the removal. things that are yeah, good mm -hmm. removal. Looking forward to it. But before we continue, we have some folks that we need to thank. Thank you to everybody who listens to our show every single week and especially our patrons. We cannot do this without you. Um we love everybody who hangs out with us in the Discord yes. and we are working on some tokens. So mm -hmm. a while ago we had an episode about flip our own legendary flip creatures yes. that flip into a planeswalker, mm -hmm. the sparking um, creatures. Uh, Mike had some art commission. I we did. might make some tokens like merfolk tokens with Kiora art mm -hmm. or like a boar token that has the adorable boar from, oh, uh, boar. you know, with, with Domri. So we haven't been able to share the art yet. We haven't shared it, but mm -hmm. um, the artist did post it on Instagram. Oh, so nice. you can go check it out on Instagram. Um, and we will have the, we can actually link the artist sure. um, in the in the notes below. Um, but if you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash guardian project pod and donate for any dollar amount. And if you're looking for another way or additional way to support the podcast, whatever platform you are enjoying the podcast on now, if you could subscribe, rate, review, 
uh, leave some comments. We'd really appreciate it. But on top of all that, you can find us on all the other social medias. If you're not following us on Instagram, you better do that so you can see those new artworks we just Yes, mentioned. and the artist is MB underscore Goodrich. Yes. That's who you can go find. Yes. Um, Mar the Mary one. Goodrich. Mary Goodrich. So they are a concept artist. And uh, the post was just done this week. So go check that out. Um, I think it's time that we go to space. So um, to infinity and beyond. All right, this week we are visiting Myra and the Magnificence Intergalactic Astratorium of Fun in Infinity, which is a space carnival that travels the galaxy. The whole park is a series of interconnected flying spaceships that can move from planet to planet, and the employees of the park are goblins, elves, vampires, and zombies. Let's break down those themes, though, and mechanics, and I think we're going to start with the heavy hitters, <laughs> which are less complicated than I thought mm -hmm. when I was going into this, mm -hmm. because I was like refusing to read. I wanted to just have someone explain that to me because it's a lot to read through the mechanics, but they really, now that I know them, are not as complicated as I thought. So mm -hmm. we'll start with attractions. Attractions are a new card type in Infinity. Um, it's a new artifact card type. And the mechanic is commander legal for some of them. Mm -hmm. So to start, you have an attractions deck of at least 10 attractions. It must be a singleton deck and you cannot put 10 of the same attraction into your deck. So like um, there's variants. Uh, of those attractions, but you have to have at least 10 and they kind of just sit off to the side. They have their own graveyard called a junkyard. They mm -hmm. don't go to the graveyard. They don't go to your hand. Right. Um, that's what the deck is. Yes. And um, although this rule isn't explicitly said about attractions, it is said that the attractions deck is very similar to your contraptions deck, which is another un uh, uh, theme that has happened in the past from and unstable with, from unstable with the contraptions deck uh, you do shuffle the deck and put it face down so whatever attraction you are getting is going to be random from your attractions deck uh, when you get to do that action yeah and you can't you can't put 10 of like the same attraction it must be singleton light commander yes, so e even if the card is different like andy mentioned uh because of the lights that are lit up which we'll talk about in a second if they have the same name can't play them both can't play them both uh so to bring an attraction onto the battlefield you have to play a card that says open an attraction so um the card like myra the magnificent or dk finder of the lost it's a zombie dk oh, mm -hmm. so smart <laughs> um those are two eternal legal commanders for example um because we're going to focus on mostly eternal legal this this episode and mm -hmm. at least from these rules perspectives right. we're not going to really address draft or sealed um but both of those commanders can be played when they enter the battlefield they say open attraction so you would you would put it on the battlefield mm -hmm. um and the way that you actually uh uh take take the abilities from your attractions is by what's called visiting them. So at the beginning of your first main phase, you roll a six sided die and you can visit an attraction with the result lit up on the right side of their text box. So on the right side of the text box, there'll be six light bulbs uh, labeled one through six. Uh, if the light bulb is lit up and you roll that die, you get to visit that particular attraction. If you have 12 attractions open and all of them have a six lit up, which six is always lit up and one is never lit up, you get to visit all of those attractions. You don't have to choose which one to visit. Um, and other dice rolls are not going to cause you to visit attractions, although there are uh, at least a few other cards. I know of at least one eternal legal card that does allow you to visit your attractions outside of at the beginning of your first main phase. And some of these attractions have prizes. Those shut down when you claim the prize but you open in another attraction to replace it once you do so yes uh and w in talking from the eternal legal uh side of it there is unfortunately only one eternal legal attraction with a prize um so if you are playing the most dangerous gamer as your eternal legal attractions commander unfortunately there's only one attraction that you're going to be able to destroy a target permanent with uh but that's okay uh, because with the 22 legal attractions, I mean, you have a ton of different variations with all those different light bulbs and everything going on. Um, yeah, I think if my math's correct, I think of the attractions, there's 143 variants of them. So I think there's there's like less than 50 different attractions, mm -hmm. but with all the variants, some have one variant, mm -hmm. some have six variants, some have four variants. I believe it's 143, but I'm not good at math. So <laughs> don't quote me because maybe it's like 146 and I just did the math wrong, but um, you, you just have to have at least 10 attractions in your deck. So um, I don't know, there's probably some numbers on, because when you roll a D6, mm -hmm. I guess when you roll two D6, there's, there's 
average numbers that like will show up more often than others, there right? Are, yes. Is there is that the case when you roll a d6? No, with no, because the d6 it's is an, one in six chance. An equal chance of one. It's an six. equal chance, so yeah. you're not rolling two. No, not, not for un, this because you only you roll have, a d6. Yes, not any, anything that affects how many dice you roll. Like like um, my my dice rolling commander will allows you to roll one additional dice whenever you roll dice. You do get to do that. Uh, there's some dice that allow or some cards that allow you to choose which dice roll to keep. Some ones that say you have to take the higher of the two dice rolls. So make sure when you're looking at that, you keep that in mind when you are building your deck. Yeah. Uh, but the next really compl really complicated. It's complicated. The next complicated. It's complex. Mechanic. I don't think it's I think it's complex, not complicated now that I've read through it. Okay. So we'll explain it. because It's really not that painful. Yeah, this is stickers. So each game, you'll have access to three sticker sheets. Uh, you can bring however many sticker sheets you want um, up to. You have to you have to bring um, at least, I think it's 10 sticker sheets. Uh, so you have to pick, it's a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 48. And you're going to randomly pick three sticker sheets from this lit, from this group of sticker sheets that you brought. At random. At it does say you cannot random. pick the sticker sheets you want to play with. Now with 48 sticker sheets, if you're looking for one particular ability or one particular, uh, yeah, if you're looking for one particular ability, you're, you're probably going to be out of luck because the abilities don't repeat from sticker sheet to sticker sheet. But if you're looking for a power and toughness sticker, those do repeat from sticker sheet to sticker sheet. And you're probably going to be able to put a group of 10 of those sticker sheets together where no matter what random three you pick, you're going to get what you want. Uh, but on these sticker sheets, there are uh, three different kind, or sorry, four different kinds of stickers that you have. There are three name stickers at the top uh, and, and name stickers can affect things that have uh, talking about how many letters are in a name, how many words are in a name, uh, how many vowels are in it. Uh, on top of that, you have three art stickers, which are just some fun images, which mostly acorn uh, creatures do care about the non-eternal legal. But we uh, do have some eternal legal ones that care about uh, some of these art stickers, two ability stickers and two power and toughness stickers. So these stickers do cost what's called tickets, which we'll get into in a second. And these are the only stickers that actually do cost tickets. Tickets are uh, a, a type of um, counter that you like can energy. Very it's similar. just energy. No, mm -hmm. it really is. They're just called tickets here. Yeah. The, the, I guess the only difference is the only time that you can place stickers is when something says you can place a sticker with energy. You can spend it at any point in time. Correct. Um, but in, in order to buy an ability or a power toughness sticker from your sticker sheet, you do have to have an ability on the stack that says you are allowed to place a sticker at that time. Yes. You can uh, always place a name sticker or an art sticker, but if you want to place one of the others, you have to just have your tickets which is just energy and it's so just it's, energy. it's really not that difficult so you can play stickers when a card says to do so like with the card robo pinata yes it's a two one creature it has when it dies you choose one you can either get two stick uh two tickets mm -hmm. which can be spent on stickers or you may put a sticker on a non-land permanent you own so if you don't care about the ability sticker or the power toughness sticker you just get to get one of the other two because you always pick those mm -hmm. but if you need the if you need the tickets because you really do want one of the other mechanics yeah then just pick that yeah and um there is a special ruling here uh, if you do have the ability to steal your opponent's permanents or creatures you cannot ever sticker your opponent's cards you can only sticker cards that you own um, so if you try to put a sticker on a card that is your opponent's, it doesn't work. It does not. It um, does not. Stickers also do stay on cards no matter no matter what zone they go to with very rare exceptions. Uh, so if a card goes to your graveyard, if it goes to exile, um, if, it, if it gets blinked or flickered or gets exiled under another creature, it gets imprinted, anything where it's in a face up zone, the sticker stays on that card. But if it goes to what's called a hidden zone, which are your hand or uh, your library, you remove the sticker, put the sticker back on your sticker sheet for you to use later on. Um, and we'll actually talk about a combo that utilizes that particular ruling. Yeah. And the the actual stickers themselves are not like stickers that you buy on, on products that don't peel off. It's like mm -hmm. post-it note stickers. Right. So like super, super like, you know, it's very i don't know the word flimsy is not the right word it's they're like peelable very peelable mm -hmm. like they're they're not gonna they're reusable sure eventually they might get dusty so you gotta you got you know you'll have to take care of that but. maybe you want to turn them into like a window sticker or something like like oh if if uh, stony creek metro park is listening uh, i never stick my my pass for the park on my car itself i like put it on a piece of cellophane 
and then put it oh, up there. Oh, a local, a local park near us has yeah. stickers. You buy passes to go to that park. Yeah, sure. but like, yeah, you can just put something on there that makes it so that it, hopefully it doesn't lose its stickers. Yeah, and honestly, if you're worried about putting stickers on your cards, you can just leave them. Convert them to a... convert them to counters and then bring the counters in like a little bag and then you can bring 10 bags of counters and then pick three of those counters at random. Because the art represents. stickers never repeat, mm -hmm. you just have to have one copy of Bolas's Horns, one bowling pin, That's right. one whatever it is, yeah. one hat. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the stickers the that can give you um, abilities uh, can give you actually quite a few abilities that are returning. So some of those stickers can give you Afflict, Battle Cry, Bolster, Bushido, Exalted, Hellbent, Heroic, Horsemanship, Infect, Landfall, Magecraft, Metalcraft, Mentor, Morbid, Monstrosity, Outlast, Partner, I'm sorry, not Partner, Persist, Proliferate, Provoke, Shadow, Skulk, Threshold, Undying. All of those are given to you. It was funny because I was looking up mechanics that were returning mm -hmm. and I was like, I cannot find these. <laughs> then I realized it's because they are all on the sticker they're sheets. They're all a, they're all mechanics based on the sticker sheets. Mm -hmm. So um I think it's fun. I've been enjoying what we're seeing from this set so far. Yeah. But there are some new mechanics that are that are not wildly used or widely used. They are just they're 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 maybe on one card or two cards. But uh the first one is Alpha Strike. It grants a creature first strike. If it's alphabetically ahead of the creature, it's fighting in combat. This does not compare the creature's names. Uh, or I'm sorry, it does compare the creature's mm -hmm. names. It's not based on creature type. Because when I originally read it, I was like, mm -hmm. well, is human in front of like um uh, horse uh you know it's like it no it's the names mm -hmm. of the creatures so mm -hmm. uh alpha strike i know the the creature that this is printed on actually has like one of those names that's like aardvark where the first two letters are the letter a, a so a, so it that should be, go first that being unless there's a creature with a number uh -oh. as the first thing which does technically alphabetically come before letters sure uh, we also have alliterative um it, it, it's a mechanic that cares about whether multiple permanents on the battlefield start with the same letter. Stickers allow you to add words to to increase these overlaps. Uh, the name stickers. Yeah, so the name can, stickers up yeah, top. Yeah. That's cool. The next is best in show. It copies spells and then targets that same creature. We also have Crash Land. Uh, this is printed on the card Captain Rex Nebula, one of our eternal legal commanders. This is whenever this vehicle deals damage, roll a six-sided die. If the result is equal to this vehicle's mana value, it deals that much damage to any target then sacrifice this vehicle. Yeah, so Captain Rex Nebula is a 2-2 human pilot employee for one red and a white. It says at the beginning of your turn, target non-land permanent you control becomes a vehicle artifact until end of turn. Its base power and toughness are equal to its mana value. It has crew two and then that crash land ability. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that's a... He's really bad at driving. I think I think Captain Rex Nebula reminds me of uh, Spo that SpongeBob from the Krusty Krab Pizza episode because he drives a rock. And this guy can literally drive anything. Is it, I didn't watch I didn't watch the show Futurama, but oh yeah, uh, it's the, it's uh, Zap, Captain Bra Zap Brannigan. Zap Brannigan. Yeah. The, the costuming it looks, looks very looks similar. very similar. Yeah. Uh, the next is Gobble. Uh, no, it's not. It's Gear Up. Roll two two six sided dice for each magic branded item you're wearing. Roll an additional six sided die. Choose two of those results. So if you're wearing you know, your your wizard's t-shirt and a planeswalker cap, mm -hmm. you're going to roll extra dice. This pay to win right here. This is the <laughs> biggest pay to win I've ever heard. Um, but since it is lunchtime, Andy, I, I'm sure you had gobble on the mind here. So Honestly, this is the best because I, I'm always snacking when I'm eating oh, with friends anyway. So this mechanic is really great. So gobble is a mechanic found on pie eating contests. It says take a bite of food or sacrifice a token so pie, feed, pie eating contest is a five mana four and a green sorcery it says as an additional cost to cast this spell gobble x each time you gobble you either take a bite of food or sacrifice a food token uh, and an x target creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain trample until end of turn but this spell could take an hour to resolve i will finish a bag of beef jerky <laughs> in this pie eating contest that my creatures uh, how many bites does it take to get to the center of a of a 
bag of beef jerky. It depends on how many creatures are on the battlefield. I'm getting the one pound bag so that I can play the card <laughs> pie eating contest. <laughs> the next is jump. So it's kind of like a dexterity mechanic here. So it's flipping a card physically over other cards to give them a bonus. So it's not really a keyword. It's kind of just something you do. So like the card Devil Knevel, a 2-1 devil performer for two and a red. With haste, it says when it enters the battlefield, jump it over any number of creatures. If it clears those creatures, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. So um, it also says you can see a jumping demonstration at devilknevel.com. Uh, so go check that out. But yeah, you're like physically flipping this over things. Yeah, that, that video I think was produced by uh, Loading Ready Run too. So it's actually a really good one <laughs> demonstrating how Devil Knevel uh, does work there. We have Parade, which is organizing your creatures into an ordered list. Uh, and then based on that list, the first thing in the list will get one bonus and the last thing in the list will get a really big bonus. And we'll talk about that more because that card comes up later in the episode. Mm -hmm. Next is Rangeling. This grants all land types. An example is the card nearby planet nearby planet is just a land and it says this card is every land type including plains island swamp mountain forest desert gate lair locust and all those urza's ones so it <laughs> enters tapped and you can um you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one so it's it's fun it seems like a really cool card i, I hope people re rule zero that into like gate stacks and stuff mazes and nearby planet. unfortunately it does have an acorn yes but you know uh, the next one uh, is is one of my favorite cards just for the alliteration going on here, and that's Sticker Kicker. Uh, sticker it's actually Wicker Picker. It, oh, the card is Wicker Picker. The ability is Sticker Kicker, uh, where you can pay an additional one generic mana as you cast a creature spell, and if you do, you get a ticket. Uh, so Wicker Picker is the creature with this ability. For three generic mana, you get a 2-3 Scarecrow Guest. It says creature spells you have have sticker kicker one and of course you can't not read the flavor text of unless you're quicker i wouldn't snicker at the wicker picker with his sticker kicker <laughs> it's very this is a really silly <laughs> card and then finally we have uh, a mechanic that i think um you know twitter had a meltdown over Pretty and i think it was the quickest i've ever seen someone upset at a new at a new set ever mm -hmm. um i actually love the card plan on using it so mm -hmm. expect to play this because this is eternal legal <laughs> which is space sculptor which divides the battlefield into separate sectors yep. it is not a good card um so i wasn't sure why everybody was so upset but space bellerin is a three loyalty planeswalker jace for two white and a blue space sculptor says that you divide the battlefield into alpha, beta, and gamma sectors. Uh, if a creature isn't assigned to a sector, its controller assigns it to one. Your opponents assign first. Um, some people were also saying alpha, beta, and unlimited would have been a fun. Uh, that would, alpha, that's beta, funny. Gamma, you know. So that's anyway, um, it has three abilities. Uh, plus one, creatures in each sector can be blocked this turn only by creatures in the same sector, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, reminds me of that card, Raging River, that mm -hmm. no one ever plays against. So I, I don't think it's really going to be a problem here either. Right. Minus one, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature in the sector of your choice. And then minus five, destroy all creatures in the sector of your choice. So he only has three loyalty. You can just kill Space Beller and, and then the Space Sculptor goes away. Mm -hmm. But it's fun. I don't really think it's that difficult to put things into three different piles. Um, and it's Eternal Legal because it does not have an acorn stamp. So I will put it into my Planeswalker deck just because. Yeah, I think it's a really good card for like go wide strategies because it helps you avoid key blockers. Maybe it helps you avoid death touch blockers or something. Yeah, like if that. you if you use its plus one to make it so that they can only be blocked by creatures in the same sector, mm -hmm. hopefully you assigned your tokens because your opponents assigned first. That's right. So you can go, you know what? All I'm in... gonna put everything in gamma That's because right. you put your death touchers in alpha and beta. I'm not but you're only gonna I think Space Bellerin's going to be a one turn almost like giving unblockable to creatures. That's how yeah. I feel it's going to end up playing because mm -hmm. no one's going to let it live yeah. for another it'll turn. Be, it'll be two thirds of your creatures can no longer block. They could have had a had a had a had a uh, artifact that said that and I think I would still play it. Yeah. Choose two thirds of target players creatures they can't block. Well, we also got another planeswalker in this set. Um with you know we're we're just just a brand new planeswalker we're past uh, talking about specific mechanics but this is the planeswalker that doesn't that doesn't listen to what you tell it yeah a new planeswalker type 2 comet yes this is comet comet the stellar pup uh, for two, a red and a white, you get the legendary Planeswalker Comet. Uh, and for its loyalty ability of zero, starts with five loyalty. You get to roll a six-sided die. 
On a one or a two, you get plus two loyalty, then create two one one green squirrel creature tokens. They gain haste until end of turn, and Comet will then chase them around your backyard so for cute. the rest of the day. Uh, on a roll of a three, you get a minus one. This is then return a card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to your hand. That's Comet digging up the bone from the backyard that it dug there before. On a four or a five, Comet Stellar Pup deals damage equal to the number of loyalty counters on him to a creature or player because he's got your back and he's going to protect you. And on a six, you get a plus one that says you may activate Comet Stellar Pup's loyalty ability two more times this turn. So that's Comet. Do a trick. I got you, fam. I'm going to do two. And, it, you know, if you do two and you do end up rolling a three twice, that's mm-hmm. the only time that Comet would end up losing losing loyalty here. Um yeah, the three, uh, yeah, you can't lose him. It's hard to lose you, Comet. You'd have to lose three people, five times in a row. Yeah, unless people attack Comet, you're not. You're probably not going to lose Comet. Yeah, which um, they're they're a monster if they attack Comet. Yeah, you think don't, about your don't choice. Don't do that. If you swing at Comet, you think about your life choices. Comet secretly has protection from uh, good people, so... Uh, uh, what are you saying about yourself? Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 All right. We are each picking one new wacky Infinity Acorn Commander that is our favorite that we will um, likely be playing with on stream, at least mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but mine is Clear to Loon Joy Sculptor. I know I mentioned it last week, mm-hmm. but we're going to do it again. Mm-hmm. A 2-3 human performer for a white and a blue. When Clear uh, Clear to Loon Joy Sculptor enters the battlefield for the rest of the game, tokens you own become cards that are still tokens. So they continue to exist after they leave the battlefield. So if I have a token, Sapperling, when it dies, it will live in the graveyard Mm -hmm. or if someone bounces a sapling to my hand i don't know why i'm using sapling i should use human because it's white and blue i'm probably not often going to make sapling can't think of so let's change that to human if the human dies goes to the graveyard human bounces comes back to my hand Mm -hmm. gets shuffled into the graveyard it lives in the graveyard uh i'm sorry shuffle to the library it lives in the library Mm -hmm. um and it has an ability to pay one a white and a blue and you can put a token from your graveyard or your hand onto the battlefield. So uh, it's a very, very fun way to utilize cards that can make a copy of creatures your opponents control or non-legendary, uh, a, a non-legendary copy like Arenicus's Vile Duplication, yes. um, which we recently saw made an Ormondal, and then we died to Ormondals later. Yeah, lots but, of Ormondals. But if I can make myself an Ormondal and mm-hmm. then that Ormondal dies, I can bring Ormondal back from the graveyard. This card's very silly. Um, but I certainly see why it's an acorn commander, because if you you make something that makes like infinite tokens or something, it's going to be very difficult to um, represent those in your library or your graveyard or potentially, I guess, your hand <laughs> if all creatures get bounced to your hand. Yeah, I, I was I was thinking of ideas for this deck, and I think the flavor text uh, really, really speaks volumes here. Uh, she'll sculpt goblin, sapperlings, merit lage. Even though that one takes a lot of balloons. Takes a lot of balloons. Although I do believe Merit Lage is, is black. So you might not actually be able to play Merit Lage in your blue-white commander deck. I think the card itself is just a colorless land. Okay. And it just produces... Yeah, because it just says... Because you remove you make counters the from it and you just make the token. Yeah, it doesn't transform into it or anything. So yeah, you can Merit Lage. You get lots of Merit Lages. You could. If you wanted to. You certainly could. So have, this have, you is started, have you started brewing this yet? I have not okay. started brewing it yet, but I know that I want to just play a bunch of clone cards that make a copy of target <laughs> creature just on the battlefield mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe mechanized production, mm-hmm. put that on something that I, you know, maybe I can that make some cool. artifacts and then those artifacts go to the, I could keep putting them back. Thousand year elixir, untapping, retapping to be able to recycle the oh, things yeah. that are in the graveyard or put it back for my hand. Um, Seems fun, we, and this does work on Moxfield now, so I will be playing this on a uh, uh, an upcoming stream. We were talking about the legality of casting tokens, because co- tokens don't have a casting cost. But there's a bunch of cards in Magic that don't have a casting cost that have, like, suspend on it or instead. And if you cast them without paying their mana cost, if you have abilities that do that, you can get around that. But tokens are still a little gray area. And not sure if new perspectives is going to work to actually cast the tokens, but luckily Claire Deloon does have the ability to put the token from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah. So my crazy, crazy commander with an acorn on it, um, 
I, I it's a cl- it's also a clone commander yes. in, a, in a way, but uh, it is it came from Planet Glurg. Uh, this is an XX Green Blue Alien Ooze Zero Zero. This says you may have it came from Planet Glurg. Enter the battlefield as a copy of X different creatures <laughs> on the battlefield. Uh, so you combine all of the um, total power, total toughness, combined mana costs, all text boxes, names, art and so on uh, from everything. So um, it does also include creature type, which is going to be slightly relevant because I planned on putting a little bit of mutate into this as well. So you don't want to copy your humans if you want to put mutate in it. But it does seem like an extremely complicated but a blast to put together to uh, make a copy of. It doesn't have to be your own creatures. Um, so you can choose your opponent's creature. So, you know, we talked about someone making a clone of an Ormondal yesterday, uh, Profane Prince. So getting a copy of Ormondal and then also someone's 10-10 so that I can have a 19 power Ormondal or something like that. And it's not actually named Ormondal. So and it doesn't remove the creatures. To me, when I read this card, it looked like it was going to absorb all the creatures like the like like a scare horror movie ooze or something mm-hmm, that absorbed mm-hmm. everything, but it doesn't, it just copies them. Uh, and it doesn't have the same name. So you can copy your Ormondal and still have your, it came from planet Glurgendal uh, to swing at people. Um, and <laughs> it's I, flavor text is a sludge with a grudge. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, I did start putting this list together. I'm, I'm 13 cards short of a completed list. And um, it is so easy to make infinite mana uh, with this commander. It's ridiculous. You just have one creature that has an untap ability and one creature that has a tap ability that can produce more mana than what it costs to untap it. Come in as a copy of both and produce infinite mana. Are there any? I wonder. There are are cards like, ah, this is green, blue. Are there untap creatures that have the actual untap mechanic from like the Lorwyn block that you could utilize? Pilipala. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's yeah. It's colorless too. Uh, Pillipala, uh, Naxaw, Click, uh, Gilder Bairn, um, Horseshoe Crab does not have the untap symbol, but has pay a blue to untap Horseshoe Crab. Oh, um, Marrow Wave Breakers um, and uh, uh, Simic Simic Ragworm uh, all do it. Uh, I I looked up in Experiment Kraj. Experiment Kraj, I looked that up on EDH Rec. That has all the activated abilities of creatures you control with plus one, plus one abilities mm-hmm. on it in Simic. So I adopted a lot from that. Um, adopted a lot from X spell costs from Zach Zara. So I'm running a lot of like Finale of Devastation, Finale of Revelation, Green Sun Zenith type effects. Um, maybe some pull from Tomorrow, Blue Sun Zenith. Uh, a lot of X spell stuff. Uh, Unbound Flourishing, Um, but I'm looking for 13 really good creature cards uh, to add into the rest of this. So if you can think of any, uh, drop those in the Discord. Yes, please help me out. Fill out the last 13 cards of this deck. All right. Now, our favorite eternal legal cards. So we're only doing one each. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned this one earlier Starlight Spectacular, which has the parade mechanic. It is an enchantment for two white, white. And it says at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose creatures you control one at a time until each creature you control has been chosen each of those creatures gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature chosen before it and then it says places everyone your uh the first creature in line gets plus zero plus zero so you'll likely pick your largest creature first unless it has trample you're gonna pick like your trample or like a flying creature or menace whatever whatever is hardest to block Mm -hmm. you're gonna put last in line in the parade it's it's like the big finale Mm -hmm. it's santa at the end of the christmas (laughs) parade uh, no, at the th- Santa's at the end of the Thanksgiving Day Parade, right? End of the Thanksgiving of the, Day Parade. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so your last creature is the most important. And what we've learned today is Santa is, in fact, the most important. So <laughs> if you're playing a creature token deck, this is going to be bananas. If you're even, even just having like four creatures, mm-hmm. it's going to be plus zero, then one, two, and the last creature gets plus three, plus three. So mm-hmm. granting... Uh, one, two, three, giving plus six, um, distributing plus six among your creatures. That's still really good. This is an enchantment that sits out. So it's going to happen on all of your, all of your, um, combat phases. Yeah. Uh, some folks were talking about how Cather's Crusade is very, you know, it's difficult to manage. I agree because you have to have all those token, like the counters to represent it. This, this you don't. You just know what order they are. Just put them in order. And you, then like this one You physically zero. put them in order. It may be difficult if you're like, I made 20 sapperlings, then sure. You know what the first and last one gets. You know what the first one, cor- correct. <laughs> so um, I think this is going to be played a lot in, yeah. in my opinion. And I, I almost might 
as redundancy, either add this as redundancy to a Gathers Crusade or just replace Gathers Crusade because this costs less. Yeah, and and you know if you have a deck like um, like the Lenore deck or something that cares about uh, it's the it's the Coven that cares about having different power uh, at your at your combat step. Yep. I mean, this is literally granting different amounts of pluses to all of your creatures, so you should always be able to activate Coven. And most Coven decks do include at least white. But I think that trigger. I wonder. Yo, know, I guess maybe you could you trigger. Could stack it. Them. Yeah, you could stack them. That's cool. I know Cathy's Crusade. There's 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 a difference. Cathy's Crusades when they enter. This mm-hmm. is during combat, mm-hmm. but I like them both. Um, but I will be trying this card out. I think it's I think it's my favorite Eternal Legal card for Commander. Yeah. Uh, although I will probably be putting that card in a lot of decks too. My favorite Eternal Legal card has to be a dice rolling card because we got I got like four or five good dice rolling cards to add to my dice rolling in, deck. In, in blue red in blue red specifically because that's the one you care about that's we did true. get a red black one but you can't you can't utilize there's, that there's a ton of really good dice rolling outside of blue red that they printed in this that does make you feel like you want to do red and a different color for dice rolling um and i really want to see people's builds out there of uh the goblin family uh the gruel dice rolling deck your Rakdos dice rolling deck your Dimir dice rolling deck i want to see all of them yeah maybe we can have a dice rolling a deck. dice rolling stream and stream. those are eternally so are they all the, yeah, all, I think all the ones all i mentioned eternal are legal. eternal legal yeah. yeah um so really glad that i, I the only thing I, we're missing here is clark's other thumb not in a silver border but that's okay so we my favorite card here is monitor monitor uh who's probably monitored by a supervisor who has a super supervisor supervisor and they're Um, looking at a monitor watching everybody work they they really are so monitor monitor for two blue blue you get a two five human employee is a big butt Uh, when monitor monitor enters the battlefield you get to open an attraction and once each turn you pay you may pay one generic mana to re-roll one or more dice you rolled Um, so this particular ruling is only going to re-roll one instance of dice rolling but it's worded in a way where if you roll three extra dice because you have three pixie guides on the battlefield that allow you to roll one extra dice for each one. Uh, you can re-roll all four of your dice that you rolled for that. Um, so this is doubling basically the amount of dice that you're going to roll looking for a very particular answer. Uh, on D6 rolling, it's it's so crazy good. On D20 rolling, it's still really, really, really strong. Um, you can only do it once each turn to pay for that one generic mana, but uh, you're going to be, I mean, in my dice rolling deck, sometimes I'm rolling like six dice at once. I get to re-roll those. Um, there's going to be some loops and things that are just maybe never going to even be able to stop. Um, so uh, the opening of the attraction is okay. It's not something I particularly looked for when adding this card to my dice rolling deck, but it does add at least one free dice roll per turn. Um, which is yeah. going to increase Will's power by plus one plus one. Um, Will uh, incremental I- attractions, or <laughs> that's, yeah. that's fun. Just you're like, well, I don't need them, but this one brings it in and helps my my strategy already. Yeah, and and on top of that, like I, I was I was looking at the attractions really hard when building my Myra deck because I did build them or not is a Myra the 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 head of the entire yeah. carnival. Yeah, I built the Myra. It's deck. her circus. I put I put twenty one attractions in that particular attraction deck um, for my dice rolling deck. I really wanted to parse it down to the minimum of ten. It was really hard, really hard picking ten attractions to put in that. Um, I did put the one attraction in that has a prize that you can win because that attraction replaces itself. I put the one attraction in Love Tunnel that allows you to uh, flicker your creature. So I, a monitor a monitor can re-enter and I can end, uh, put in more attractions. Yeah. But other than that, it's like a little bit of pump here, there, maybe some card draw. It, it's going to be very random. Um, but the the one generic mana to re-roll is why I'm adding it. The attraction, icing on the cake. Now... I think it's important that we read the flavor text here because I've been trying to hold in my laughter this entire time. It says nine fires, a hull breach, and a, a quafluvian mega nibbler <laughs> <to> escape <laughs> from the petting zoo. I I wish we had a card representing your quafluvian mega nibbler mm-hmm. um, because I think I'm a mega nibbler. You're I a mega nibbler. Snack mm. all day. Cheese it's beef jerky, <laughs> cheese. I'm always re- reminded of of Nibbler from Futurama, which we already mentioned earlier, ah. which is the little pet thing that Leela has that has like a third eye on the top of its head that's nicknamed Nibbler, but it's actually like a prince of a planet from another. Yeah, no, they eat everything. <laughs> they <just> eat <laughs> everything. Okay, so let's talk about some combos that we are going to see. Um, we have two, and they, they both require um, sack outlets and stickers Mm -hmm. so i will go first with 
Blank Goblin. So the card is just, you get to change its name, and it's a 2 2 Goblin Guest for two and a red. It says when this creature enters the battlefield, you may put a, a name sticker on it, add red to your mana pool for each unique vowel on that sticker. So this is Eternal Legal. Both these combos that we're talking about are Eternal Legal, so you will be able to actually do these. Um, so uh, they do clarify. Uh, A-E-I-O-U, and then the sometimes Y is included. So A-E-I-O-U and Y are included. This mm -hmm. combo is going to include a free sack outlet. For this, I'll talk about Ashnod's Altar, which we've heard of before, but it's an artifact for three. Sack a creature, get two two colorless mana to your mana pool. And then finally, Enduring Renewal, an enchantment for a two white white. Play with your hand revealed. If you would draw a card, reveal the top card of your library instead. If it's a creature, you put it in your graveyard. Otherwise, you draw a card. What's important here is whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from play, return it to your hand. So um, you play Goblin. Um, th this will change depending on the, the way that you, you uh, name the Goblin, because when you put it into play, you're going to put a name sticker on it. If it has one vowel, two vowel, or three vowels it is actually it does actually matter mm -hmm. but like we said earlier if a creature dies that had a sticker on it it stays on it in the graveyard Correct. so you're not renaming this goblin every time this happens you this is this is the name you have chosen yep um so what you're going to do here is play out the goblin you're going to sacrifice that goblin to the ashnod's altar if you have just one vowel you make one red mana um, when it enters, mm -hmm. you can sacrifice it to the Ashton's altar to get two colorless and then enduring renewal is going to put it back into your hand. So at that point, you don't really have anything going on other than you can constantly cast it. So I guess if you have like an impact tremors or a perforos or something, you can get pings, enter the battlefield, leave the battlefield triggers. If it has two vowels, you are actually going to net red mana now mm -hmm. because you can you keep one of that mana in your mana pool and then the two mana that you're going to get from the Ashnod's altar and then the, that extra red will then be able to pay for itself. Yep. If you have three vowels, you're just going to basically be able to now net red mana and colorless mana. So if you're playing cards that have colorless uh, requirements in their activation cost, you are in white. So there is that one Eldrazi that flickers things. Eldrazi Displacer. Eldrazi Displacer. Yeah. So now you can pay for that. So um, it... It matters how many vowels are in this combo mm -hmm. uh, and what you can do. But this card is being talked, the goblin, the blank goblin, blank is goblin. being talked about as one of the most combo centric cards from this set in, in, uh, in Commander. And I am very much looking forward to seeing how many vowels people are going to put on and what they're going to do. Because this is yes. just one of many combos mm -hmm. we will eventually see. Mm -hmm. And like, like Andy said, this doesn't work if you just kill the goblin and bring it back because the sticker then doesn't get removed. Um, right. It's only when it goes to that hidden zone of your hand does the sticker get removed and then you get to put it back on when it goes in. Yeah. Um, so even flickering it or anything, it stays on it. It stays while even if you, f yeah, if you um, flicker it. If you are able to produce uh, three red mana from three, you can use uh, any altar uh, that's a free sack outlet. Uh, I, I, I like Altar of Dementia. You'll be able to, to mill, mill everyone all your out. opponents out. Um, and there are cards on there that have five vowels on there. So you'll be able to produce red mana uh, and be able to do you know, whatever you want there. Uh, but this next combo here, uh, it, it gets a little complicated, but if if you played Alchemy uh, back when Alchemy like first started becoming a thing, you, you might actually have a really good chance of understanding this on the first the first shot here. <laughs> so this one involves Revel Arc, Ashnod's Altar, and Robo Pinata. So Revel Arc is a five mana, four and a white elemental four, three with flying. It says when Revel Arc leaves the battlefield, return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, in combination with Ashnod's altar or any type of altar, really you're just trying to sacrifice uh, your creatures at instant speed. Um, you're going to be able to kill your Revel Arc and trigger that ability. But Using a sticker, you can actually override Revelark's power and toughness to make it power two or less, so that Revelark's ability to return up to two target creatures with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield can target itself. So, using a card like Robo Pinata, which is a two-one clown robot for two and a white, it says when robot pin when Robo Pinata dies, choose one. Either get two stickers, or you can put a sticker on a non-land permanent you own you'll be able to loop uh, both Revel Arc and Robo Pinata over and over and over again. Um, you, you will need two tickets to, in order to pay for one of the power uh, two or less power and toughness stickers on one of your sticker sheets. There's 22 sticker sheets in total that have power two or less stickers, and only one of those stickers costs three tickets. All of the rest cost two tickets. So you need two tickets to start the loop, kill your Robo Pinata to put the sticker on Revel Arc, 
kill Revelark to return Robo Pinata and Revelark. And at that point, you can um, continuously loop everything for infinite mana if your altar produces mana. Um, infinite enter the battlefield triggers and death triggers. You'll have an infinite number of tickets. And so you'll be able to put all of your ability stickers on whatever stickers you have, all of your art stickers, your word stickers, your mm -hmm. power and toughness stickers on everything that you have. Um, and hopefully win the game with any ETB. Maybe it's an altar of the brood again to mill all of your opponents, um, trying to keep it in mono white. Um, but this also does technically work with the creature Vesper Lark. Vesper Lark is two and a white for a flying two one. It says when Vesper Lark leaves the battlefield, return target creature card with power one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this doesn't return two things. Um, so you won't be able to, you know, get infinite tickets or anything, but you will be able to loop Vesper Lark back and forth. You will need a yeah. power one or less sticker, which there are only nine of. But seeing as you can show up with 10 sticker sheets, pick three at random, at minimum, two of them will have the power one or less sticker on there for you to use. Um, you will need something else to win, something that cares about ETB or death triggers in order to happen. Uh, this particular combo is, is what I was referring to in Alchemy. There was a uh, a Davriel Kane Vesper Lark deck at the, when Alchemy was still very fresh on Arena that people were using to infinite loop and win uh, with some sort of aristocrat trigger. Yeah, yeah. It looks like these are very... Um loopy triggers yes, they they're, they're, they're not they're not going to just end the game right away you have to actually do a little bit of work have mm -hmm. some other cards to go with them but um these are wild and we we hope to see some of these cards uh we very much like this set so yes, um, it's very it sounds fun. like we might actually be in the minority but i love this set i like unsets i'm excited to see the um the uh shock lands with the space oh, they theme look so pretty. and all of the, the basic lands here so this set comes out this week so mm -hmm. um there's a good chance that we're getting together to draft this over the weekend um but that's going to be it for our episode this week i hope everybody here um listening in enjoyed this episode and is looking forward to playing with infinity we are going to try to keep our our um i guess like new set episodes because we don't really do a full set review we're mm -hmm. going to try to keep these episodes maybe something like this where we pick one or two cards try and do do something that's um you know a little more interesting more single card discussion sure. so that we can kind of go into where we'd put it instead of just saying i want to put this one card in one deck maybe break down all the commanders that maybe could benefit mm -hmm. from cards so well and, and a set like this hopefully we helped if you didn't understand some of the mechanics like attractions and stickers hopefully you, you have a better understanding of that in the way that we explained yeah it. they really were not as complicated as i and i really was fighting back i was like yeah. this seems so hard and then i finally <laughs> I finally, I was like, okay, this really is not, mm -hmm. this really is not as painful as I thought. But uh, if you want to chat with me more, you can find me on Twitter at Andy Flory. And I'm on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine. Uh, send me all of your deck lists because I'm very, all of your dice rolling deck lists because I'm very interested in seeing all the support cards outside of Blue Red. Um, and, and good luck brewing with, with the Unfinity set, whether you're an Acorn player or a non-Acorn player. Go nuts.